Good evening, folks. Uh, participants so far, are still oh, coming sorry. online. Um, and so we'll just wait a couple minutes uh, for the counter to stop counting. And then we'll tuck down our, our meeting here. So we've already got about 26 participants, which is great to see. Okay, we seem to be leveling off around 32. Marcy, is that, uh, we good then? Yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, perfect, thank you. Uh, so welcome everybody to uh, our neighborhood meeting. I'm just trying to find a place where the sun's not right in my eyes. Um, I'm Dave Newman. I'm Director of Infrastructure Services with the Town of Gibsons. And uh, we have uh, several other staff with us uh, from, uh, we have Katie Thomas from Planning, uh, Shane Castle from uh, Infrastructure Department as well, uh, Rebecca Anderson from our, uh, who's our Corporate Officer, and uh, Marcy Beecham, which is also a part of Infrastructure Services Department. Um, and uh, she's going to make sure that she documents uh, comments and questions and so on. Um, so first off, um, we are here primarily to talk about uh, Glassford Road and uh, possible treatments for Glassford Road. Um, and at this stage, what we're doing is uh, we're looking for input. Uh, and so we've had quite a few emailed comments uh, and questions, and I will do my best to uh, answer those um, while I'm explaining the project. Uh, and then there will be an opportunity after I've gone through our, our uh, um, contents of our meeting uh, for you to uh, raise your virtual hand and um, uh, you'll be able to come in and, and uh, ask your question. And at that time, we're requesting uh, that you provide name and uh, address or at least road that you live on, uh, which would be great. Um, we are at a little bit of um, uh, business uh, as well is uh, just ask everyone to be uh, respectful uh, at this meeting and any other town meeting uh, is that we just yeah, we ask that uh, we that people treat everyone else with respect, whether or not it's uh, staff or other uh, people making comments. Uh, as I say, we're here to um, document comments and concerns, and uh, then we will be uh, returning to. Uh, we'll either be returning to the council with those comments and concerns at that time, or we will correlate the um, uh, the comments uh, and send back a survey. Um, regardless, we are sending back a survey. It's just whether or not we talk to council before or after uh, we send that survey. So this is not gonna be your only opportunity for input, um, but hopefully we'll be able to narrow things down to uh, you know, possible scopes of, of work that we could do to uh, meet the objectives. Um, so I'd like to get some of the smaller uh, topics out of the way. Uh, and we're bringing those up with you uh, because you're in the neighborhood. Um, so one is the uh, footbridge across uh, Charmin Creek on the, uh, uh, the gravel lane that we call uh, Beachcomber. And uh, for the past year and a bit, I guess, uh, that's being closed. And what had happened was uh, that the, uh, the creek had uh, undermined the culvert and, and uh, washed away some of the pipe bedding. Uh, and so uh, you could walk across it and potentially uh, drop a, a foot or a ankle into a, a, a hole that would suddenly appear. Um, of course, we don't want that to happen, uh, more likely with vehicles, of course, but uh, still with pedestrians. Uh, that was a concern. We did look at repairing it uh, by excavating some of the backfill and uh, recompacting it, but uh, we were unsuccessful in that and determined that the culvert would have to come out and either be replaced with another culvert or a bridge. Um, and uh, in this case, we're pursuing the uh, a pedestrian bridge. 
and uh, we've got a uh, application in with the uh, Ministry of or Department of Fisheries and Oceans, uh, who require uh, we require permission from them to conduct works within the creek. So we're waiting on that, and uh, we're currently also working on uh, a design for that. Uh, and the intent at this point is that the bridge would be uh, an aluminum footbridge, uh, similar to many that you see around for, um, for docks or wharfs, uh, square aluminum tubing. Um, and uh, right now, the, uh, uh, it's somewhat out of our hands as far as the scheduling goes, uh, but we hope to hear back in time to construct uh, these works this, this year. Uh, the other item that I want to mention is the Pebbles Beach access. Uh, as you know, that, that has, uh, the town has had a sign up there uh, closing the beach. And the reason that is, or closing the access, uh, the reason is, is twofold. Uh, one, some of the neighboring properties have active uh, slippage of the bank, uh, where uh, a section of the bank uh, about a year ago dropped about, well, initially it was just a few inches, but uh, it's dropped more since then. Um, and uh, they are just addressing that now. Uh, and of course, we wouldn't. We were trying to discourage people from uh, going down to the beach. However, we couldn't exactly close it because you could still uh, get to that beach from the ocean and from uh, from neighboring um, neighboring beach accesses, as well as from private property. Uh, the other thing is, is those stairs. If you're familiar with going down to that beach, uh, are quite steep. Um, and there's uh, limited handrails uh, and uh, they've also sh shown signs of slippage as well. So uh, we're uh, having an engineer look at that uh, this year and uh, we will come up with uh, an another design for accessing that beach through the same location is what the intent is. Uh, so you may see some excavator out there in the next few days. Uh, they're doing part of the work from the barge and part from uh, uh, accessing through the park. Uh, and that is the uh, work that's being done to private property at this point. Um, the other item that I want to bring up is uh, to briefly go through the scope of works uh, that is part of the town's uh, grant that we recently received. And this grant uh, is for tourism dependent communities. And uh, there was only, I believe, 30 applicants. Uh, and uh, we, were, we were one of those, of course. And uh, we were successful in our application. And the uh, objective of the grant was to uh, encourage tourism and uh, preferably COVID friendly tourism. So we've tried before to apply uh, for what we call the missing links um, uh, uh, project. And we have a number of trails and a number of uh, cycling areas where we've got cycling facilities and yet they're not all linked together yet. And, uh, and, and Many of those have been built by developers uh, as a requirement of their development. And so consequently it's being fairly piecemeal, uh, which is it's just sometimes the nature of the beast. Um, and we always take those opportunities to construct sections of, of infrastructure where the opportunity arises. And now we've got the opportunity to fill in some of those gaps. So this is a 100% grant funded uh, project so no cost to the taxpayer uh, on this, which is uh, uh, a real boon for the town and of course for the community. Uh, so I'm gonna share my screen and, and briefly talk about the uh, missing links, each of the missing links. Uh, however, we are having another meeting, uh, another community meeting for the whole community uh, coming up on the, I believe it's the 21st of uh, this month and uh, we'll go through the project in more detail. 
uh, and we encourage you to attend that meeting as well. Uh, so I'm just going to share my screen and uh, show you the overall map of the town of Gibsons uh, and the, the uh, sections where we've uh, got some sort of construction going on in order to improve uh, cyclist and pedestrian connectivity. And that will lead naturally into the Glassford uh, section. So uh, hang tight and hopefully you should be able to see my uh, my screen. And um, I've got my screen, uh, my second screen above my camera screen. So it looks sometimes like I'm chasing flies, uh, but I'm actually just looking at my screen above. So um, I assume somebody would have told me by now if you can't see my screen, but the red lines are existing or planned infrastructure that's already in the works in some form or other. Uh, the green is uh, represents uh, the locations of these missing links that this grant covers. So starting at the south down by uh, Garrow Point Road, uh, the first section of red there is the works that is going to be completed as part of the Gospel Rock development. And that involves some traffic calming and uh, a boardwalk uh, along the ocean side. And then we get to uh, um, Glassford Road there, where cyclists would be directed down Glassford. Uh, and then when you reach the end at, at the intersection there of uh, uh, Gower Point and Glassford at the north end, uh, there's going to be a crosswalk with a, an, a shorter crossing distance in order for people to safely get to the park. There will be some improvements going from the intersection down near the marina uh, at Prouse where Gower Point uh, takes a turn and uh, those improvements will be uh, between uh, Dougal Road, I suppose, and, and South Fletcher. And then you lead up the hill, of course, to, uh, uh, to Upper Gibson's. Now, before we leave uh, Lower Gibsons, the, uh, we're also looking at improving the, uh, the route through on Marine Drive and then through the uh, town uh, along Garrow Point Road. We're a little bit more limited on what we are able to do along there. And so largely it's going to be some localized road narrowing and, and uh, signage and, and pavement markings. Um, now moving to Upper Gibsons, uh, we've got a short section there and uh, by Veterans Way uh, and uh, uh, Gibsons Way, and that is putting in uh, bike lanes, painted bike lanes on both sides of the road uh, that would link up Gibsons Way with the improvements that are currently being uh, completed uh, at, the, at the corner where Veterans Way turns that corner. Um, and that involves the elimination of the parking on the west side of veterans on that short little section and marked bike lanes. Then it goes into the uh, uh, multi-use path um, on Veterans Way, which if you haven't been down there yet, it's kind of neat because it's not exactly in this location. Uh, it's actually down here, uh, but it links up to uh, a pedestrian pathway that goes over to the rec center and also takes you through into uh, the parkland development. Uh, so it's it's quite a nice pedestrian link now. Uh, the next piece we hit is uh, infill of the section of works that's being undertaken right now as part of a de development uh, and to a section of works that was done uh, by a previous developer. I don't remember four or five, six, seven years ago. Um, and so that will complete that, uh, that section. Although not shown on here, Mahan Road also uh, will be marked out uh, or th uh, if there's adequate room, there will be uh, bike lanes marked out there as well, which will lead you to the trails within uh, White Tower Park. Uh, and up here on uh, opposite the IGA Mall, we're looking at a pedestrian controlled um, warning uh, beacon 
with a crosswalk on Payne Road and then an improved trail that will not be trespassing on private property uh, through that uh, along there and link up again to the existing trail that is along Payne Road. Uh, I'm going to go into all of this in more detail uh, on our 21st meeting. This is just to give you kind of like a little bit of a, a taster, so to speak. Um, but I'll be speaking uh, in a little bit more detail to each of these projects uh, at that time. And uh, we're also meeting with TRAC, the local transportation choices uh, group, to discuss each of these projects to collaborate and to uh, uh, to discuss uh, various options and, and details of these proposed links. Uh, next would be a trail that goes, that would link Sunnycrest over to the trail that was just constructed as part of a development on the north side of Brothers Park. And that, you can see that connects through again to, uh, um, to Parkland development there. What's not shown on here at this point uh, is that there is another pedestrian link that is being constructed right now along the east side of Parkland phase four. The developer is constructing that. Excuse me for a minute. Um, the developer is also constructing frontage works, which uh, is to provide pedestrian and cyclist facilities along uh, a portion of Reed Road and uh, we're completing uh, that section up to park. And so we would have completed uh, pedestrian and cycle infrastructure up to park road, leaving this blue line for some time in the future. We are having talks with the SCRD uh, to see if there's uh, some way that we can uh, fast track that. That was included as a separate uh, application in this grant, uh, but they that that was not approved. Um, I think the cost was I think roughly around three hundred twenty-five thousand, I believe, uh, to construct uh, those uh, infrastructure improvements. So that pretty much covers that portion. Um, now we are. Um, I'm going to leave the map up. I think uh, just so I can fiddle around with my cursor and show you different items as we talk about the uh, Glassford works themselves. And uh, when we come to the Q and A's, uh, we will, you're free obviously to ask questions on any of these items that I've, I've discussed. Um, as for specific details uh, on the grant works, uh, if you perhaps could hold, um, the more detailed questions until our meeting on the 21st, if you're able to attend that. Uh, if you don't feel comfortable asking uh, questions uh, in this Zoom forum, uh, please feel free to email any questions that uh, come up uh, to you as, as I'm, I'm talking and other people are asking. So Glassford Road, uh, it's, um, we have a hierarchy, well, every municipality really has a hierarchy of uh, road types. And those road types are a local road. They then step up to uh, collector and then they go to arterial. And the names are somewhat self-explanatory, but collector roads collect the traffic from the local roads and those collector roads are then channeled towards an arterial road. Uh, and so that's just the, the way that you uh, manage and handle traffic, as well as the road standards that you uh, construct or work towards. Uh, so Gower Point Road is the collector road through the town. Uh, Glassford, on the other hand, is a local road. Uh, so what we're trying to do with this, or one of the objectives, is to move some of the traffic that is, in a way, using that local road as a collector road, uh, often shortcutting the, uh, the section of Gower Point Road that goes down to uh, the South Fletcher intersection and then down by Dougal Park. 
um, in in a way because of the nature of the town and how the town has grown up, uh, it's not perhaps not the best alignment for a collector road. Um, but as I say, this this town has gradually grown and uh, um, that uh, development has been focused on on the uh, the types of road that exists. I think a, you know a much straighter line would be would have been nicer. Um, and uh, but this is this is what we've got and we've examined, uh, alternative routes and uh, really the existing one is uh, the favored one for uh, a number of reasons that I won't go into and don't have time at this uh, this point. Uh, so one years ago, I think it was oh man 2012 and I could be wrong on the date, we did an extensive traffic uh, calming, study over throughout the whole town and and Glassford was identified as uh, requiring uh, work to uh, channel traffic back to the collector road so that vehicles would not be using it as a, as a collector road because it is a residential neighborhood recognizing that uh, there are residences of course along the collector road as well um, and uh, residents provided input to that, uh, and then we did a, did do a survey that um, gave some information uh, to council, but uh, no work was proposed at that time. And uh, now this is coming back up as part of our well, as part of the grant program, and to um, implement uh, another part of the OCP because our pedestrian and trail networks that we're proposing are consistent with the official community plan. And so that OCP, that official community plan was uh, and is the community's, um, what, the, what the community wants to see for their community, what the, people, what the residents and, and businesses want to see for their community. And so this uh, Glassford route is identified as a main pedestrian and cyclist corridor. Um, the things that work against uh, against that, uh, in a way, is that uh, it's because of the the angle of the road. It tends to be a little bit more of a uh, a straight shot uh, through to Garrow Point Road, and so it's used a lot for cut through traffic. It's a very straight road, uh, which means drivers have great visibility and uh, they can easily drive faster than the posted speed limit. Um, it's very, very wide. In fact, Glassford is is uh, got a, a slightly wider road dedication already, and the asphalt paving is uh, wider than a lot of our roads as well. Um, so those are the things that can contribute to traffic speed. Uh, so at this point, as I say, looking for uh, public input, I am going to address some um, items right now that have uh, been raised already uh, by the public. Some of them uh, may be you. Um, so one of the concerns was about parking at the road end, uh, which could be done uh, or addressed fairly easily. Uh, there was there was a during the design process. Um, and uh, there was some concerns about using Blaine Lane as a shortcut. Um, and one term that I liked uh, is that uh, uh, if this road is being calmed, uh, which roads are going to get excited? Um, meaning which roads are, or I took that to mean which roads are going to receive the additional traffic. And that goes back to what I was saying about uh, directing traffic back onto the collector road. Um, there was questions about our use of the money, whether or not we should be spending it on on paving areas of town. Um, however, this is a uh, a grant, uh, and it is they have very strict parameters about what the grant can be used for. And when we get grant opportunities, staff and often consultants 
and sometimes council as well put in their uh, two bits as, as far as how to make the or how to best improve our chances of receiving that grant money because those are often oversubscribed to the point where it's impossible to fund every project so it becomes somewhat of a uh, um, an exercise in, in decent grant writing as well as a project that fits the grant criteria. Um, uh, there was a, a question as to what other traffic calming measures have been entertained or could be entertained. And that's something that uh, I want to chat, give you guys a, an opportunity to comment and ask questions on, on anything specific that, uh, of that nature. Um, there was a question about reducing speed. Absolutely, the speed would be reduced. However, uh, if you can, as I mentioned about those features of the road being so straight and so wide, uh, such clear visibility, uh, posting a sign at 30 kilometers is going to do very little if a vehicle can easily and some would argue safely travel at a greater speed. And that's something that we've changed in our road standards is to have engineers uh, design roads that uh, cannot be driven fast, safely faster than the desired uh, speed limit. And a lot of our roads around are uh, a little bit old school, uh, like South Fletcher, you can see is very, very wide. Um, and before we put the traffic calming in there, uh, very easy to exceed the speed limit. Uh, same with Glassford. Um, there was some question as to whether there uh, is really a problem or not. And uh, the, as I mentioned, we've done, uh, we had consultants work on a traffic calming master plan for us and they saw a problem uh, as well as receiving feedback from the public at that time. And uh, we continue to receive concerned calls from uh, residents on the street who uh, you know, walk or, or take their children along that uh, street. And then uh, lastly, of course, we're uh, looking at the OCP where we are uh, focusing on how to um, accommodate cyclists uh, along this route in a safe manner. Um, one of the ideas put forward is to close off uh, Glassford uh, at the south end and uh, that if that is a, uh, a choice that was ultimately decided on by council based in part on, on your feedback, uh, we could, we would, or I would, staff would recommend doing it on a trial basis first um, because often you do your best to think of all the uh, problems that could occur or the side effects. And uh, uh, so putting temporary barricades in place would enable us to establish what those problems are, get some feedback and, uh, and then um, potentially address or, or change, uh, change some details of, of the temporary work. Um, it seems to be some question as to whether or not this closure of Glassford Road uh, is driven by uh, the recommendation from council or the direction from council to be creating a, a, a lot for affordable housing at the Glassford end. No, uh, we can create the lot without actually closing Glassford Road. It's a fairly wide road dedication there. And so should council determine that closing the road wasn't uh, what they want to pursue uh, an affordable housing lot could be constructed uh, or could be created down there. And that affordable housing lot could either be used to construct or land uh, in order to build an affordable housing structure or structures on, uh, or it could be sold uh, by the town and the funds put towards uh, the affordable housing fund. Um, I see uh, if we do a closure of Glassford Road that we would leave, uh, well, I know that we would leave a corridor course for cyclists and pedestrians and that we would likely have some bollards in there for emergency vehicles uh, should the need arise. So I'm going to stop talking at this point. 
Uh, we've got uh, about a half an hour for questions. However, if uh, things are going along swimmingly and uh, uh, there's interest in continuing with uh, some construction, constructive uh, comments and dialogue, uh, then I, I, I can extend the meeting by another 15 minutes or so uh, in order to accommodate. So I'm going to turn this over. I believe Marcy is um, taking names uh, and uh, you have a vir virtual raise your hand at the bottom of your screen. Uh, please use that and uh, Marcy will introduce you. Um, and uh, um, I'm asking or requesting uh, that you provide your name and uh, the road you live on. Thank you very much. Let the questions begin. Okay, so um, I'm just going to, uh, I've got Kevin here. So Kevin, I'm going to allow you to talk, Kevin Hamilton. Um, and then if you would like to just say, sorry, I said your name out. I'm just thinking that might be the best way for me to identify whose hand I am choosing. Um, so anyways, Kevin Hamilton, um, I'm going to allow you to speak. And then if you want to just say the road that you live on. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can okay. Hear you, Kevin. Uh, yeah. So Kevin Hamilton, I live um, on uh, Gower Point in the leg that's between, uh, say, Dougal Park and Franklin. Yep. And um, Dave, I really want to say, you know, thanks for going over this whole comprehensive plan. You know, it sort of gives us a sense of how, <clears throat> you know, one's own interests are just a piece of it. Mm -hmm. um, but as someone who lives on that stretch of Gower Point, um, my concern is that the traffic along Gower Point between Dougal Park and Franklin is, it, it's considerable at the moment and it's, it's been steadily increasing. Um, there's a lot of people speeding and I realize that um, it's a more major uh, artery than um, Glassford is, um, but it, it's it's enough of an issue that there's other people on this stretch I'm aware of, um, you know that that feel there's people are going by too quickly and wonder, for example, why something couldn't have been put in place uh, like the traffic calming that you see down uh, past the municipal offices and the library and so forth, um, but with any kind of closing of Glassford, it strikes me that the situation, which is definitely not ideal at the moment on that stretch of Gower Point is just gonna get worse because it's gonna force more traffic uh, up onto Gower Point. Um, so I had emailed the, the township with um, a suggestion that came from talking with some neighbors and and that was um, the consideration of making um, Glassford a one-way and that section of Gower Point uh, between uh, Dougal Park and Franklin as a one-way the opposite way. Now I'm not sure what would be the ideal directions but the idea would be that all this traffic that's uh, leaving town towards the south or coming into town from the south uh, could be uh, split into two. And um, there could also be traffic calming measures like the, um, the kind of, uh, I don't know if you call them speed bumps technically, but out in front of the library and so on. Oh, speed cushions. Speed cushions, yeah. yeah. Um, put on, on both uh, sections of road to, to try to uh, keep the, um, the speed down. So that was my suggestion and, you know, appreciate it. It comes from someone who's, you know, living on a stretch of road sure. where they foresee, well, essentially the traffic doubling, I think, and already it's considerable and it's moving fast. It's moving too fast. Yeah. Thank you. Um, yeah. Thanks, Kevin. I appreciate the comments and uh, the one way idea intrigued me. Um, so I was just taking some notes as you were asking. So, uh, one of the things that uh, we will be talking about uh, both at the, at the committee meeting 
on June 15th, uh, as well as the next public meeting on the uh, 21st, uh, is the traffic calming plans on Gower Point uh, between um, Franklin towards Secret Beach. And the, this is, it's kind of interesting with traffic calming because one thing that traffic calming does is it slows traffic down and uh, in theory reduces vehicle speed and make it safer. The other thing that it does is uh, it makes drivers who are destined for other parts uh, to avoid those roads because they are slower and they have physical constraints uh, built into them. And so they will choose the road that uh, has less obstacles and, and they can therefore travel faster. And so you have to be very, very careful when you are doing traffic calming that you are not, for instance, in this case, putting traffic calming on Glassford Road and forcing that traffic onto a road that, uh, and, and then creating another problem there. In this case, we're, we're forcing the traffic onto a collector road. Now, I understand that Glassford's uh, got some, or sorry, uh, uh, Gower Point's got some challenges and I'm gonna speak to that as well. Uh, but in this case, what we're doing is we're forcing traffic uh, onto uh, the collector road, which is where they should be going. The, if we did traffic calming on the leg of, of uh, Gower Point that you're talking about, one of the uh, things that could happen uh, and very likely would to some degree or other is that you would then force traffic to avoid those roads and send them down Franklin, which is another local road. And, you know, maybe Headlands, maybe Cochrane, maybe Burns, whatever. Uh, and so uh, it wouldn't be advisable to do traffic calming on that length of, of Gower Point for that reason. Um, just a brief note here on speeding. Uh, is that um, uh, enforcing, setting the speed limit is the town's responsibility. We don't have to do anything if it's a 50 kilometer speed limit. However, any different speed limit has to be by bylaw, which is kind of an interesting municipal thing. Um, regardless, if we post the speed limit, it is the RCMP's responsibility to enforce it. And so if you're seeing speeding vehicles, then it is the RCMP that needs to respond to that, not the town. Um, the other thing that is going to um, be interesting is, and will affect uh, traffic to a degree along here, uh, or along Gower Point Road, is the traffic calming on the section of Gower Point that uh, runs through the Gospel Rock area. And the developer is required to uh, construct such measures to reduce the speed limit or, or reduce the speed along there and make it safer for cyclists and pedestrians. And so I believe that depending on what options council chooses uh, or supports, uh, we could see a reduction in traffic volume as well along there. Because ideally what we would want to have happen is ferry traffic, for example, should be going straight up the by bypass and, and, and to points beyond. Or traffic from area E should be going up Pratt because that's an arterial road. So again, that think of that hierarchy. Where do we want traffic to go? Um, I'm gonna chew over that one way idea a little bit more um, because I, I appreciate the imagination on that and, and uh, um, yeah, I'm not quite ready to comment on it, uh, um, but uh, yeah, as I say, a very interesting idea. Am I still able to say anything further? Um, sure, uh, make just, it very, just very quick. Just... Some, uh, uh, some maybe clarity on the bit around yep. Gospel Rock because it strikes me that the, the winding part around Gospel Rock um, with the narrow road, that it's almost, you know, traffic calming by its current design. You simply can't drive very quickly through there. 
you know, there's a section as you go further south and you're around um, the tight corner that you're sort of, uh, you know, going up a hill and coming towards uh, Secret Beach where I think, you know, you could pick up a little bit of speed, but there's even a, a big uh, turn right at the corner where it straightens out in front of Secret Beach. So, you know, I travel that quite a bit and it strikes me that no one really speeds through there very much right now the way it is. You simply, you simply can't. Um, try, I don't know how often you try walking it, but it's, it's somewhat disconcerting when you're walking it. Now on that. the, yeah. on the water side, uh, the pedestrians will have a, a safe corridor now, which would be great. Um, what makes this area unsafe is for cyclists, uh, because if you're heading uh, towards Secret Beach from Gibsons, uh, you're having to contend with vehicles who are, many drivers are going faster than uh, 20 or 30 kilometers. Yeah. And uh, I agree with you, the alignment of the road um, would certainly help. Uh, but our experience is, yes, there is uh, vehicles that are traveling faster than the road conditions yeah, well, I would say that the bigger issue with the cyclists is that the road is not wide enough yeah. for a cyclist and a car. Yeah, and, and I realize speed's an issue too, but of the two, I think the width of the road and yeah. the windiness of the road is where the problem is for the cyclists. Yeah, and, and, and we understand that and we're working with an engineer on that. Um, and as I say, if you're interested, please come to the uh, council meeting on the, or the committee meeting on the 15th or the public meeting on the 21st. Okay. Thank um, you very much. Thanks, Kevin. Appreciate your comments. Okay. We have Jody Schick next. Hey, Jody. Hey, thanks, Dave. Um, I actually really, I'm quite intrigued by that uh, one way option as well. I, I'm not sure how many other people here. Um, share my view on this, but I think that that a lot of us who live on Glassford, I live on the corner of Glassford and Gower Point Road on the, the north end of it. Um, so I see traffic going both ways um, in front of uh, the park and stuff as well. To me, um, I don't really, like I would like to see Glassford improved. We've waited a long time for it. There was other steps in the traffic calming master plan that I thought were gonna get implemented that never did on Glassford. But at the same time, I'm not really wanting to hose the section of Gower Point Road that parallels Glassford um, to make Glassford a lot better. I'd like to think if we're gonna improve Glassford that there's gonna be a plan to improve conditions for people that live on the section of Gower Point Road that possibly are gonna take that extra traffic. Um, so I'd really be looking for suggestions from the engineers on how they're gonna do that because I for all intents and purposes, Glassford and Gower Point Road look identical on those two sections. They're both narrow. Well, they're probably a similar bit of pavement. Um, as much as we call Gower Point Road the collector, um, there's no sidewalk on it. There's no bike lanes. There's nothing really there to make it look like a collector. Um, it looks the same as Glassford. Um, but for Glassford, sure, I am all for uh, greatly reducing the volume and greatly reducing the speed of traffic on there. Um, one of my concerns about disclosing it at the south end is that it doesn't do much about speed at the north end. Um, and, uh, you know, there's lots of residents in this neighborhood that still drive close to this posted speed limit, which is 50k on that road. It's not 30 right now. Um, it's totally legal to drive 50 and that's far above the comfortable speed for walk for pedestrians and cyclists on the road. So I'd love to see a more complete um, suite of, uh, of options that include speed reduction on the street. Um, you know, one of the big benefits of, of going the one way route on there is that you free up a lot more space for pedestrians and cyclists on it. Um, and, uh, and a part of the grant application, I was super excited to see that um, street trees were potentially part of this plan on Glassford. Um, cause right now it's, yeah, it's long straight, it's ugly and people, um, who are driving possibly the speed limit are still going what seems to a pedestrian and a person in their house far too quickly. Um, and I just want to also note that, uh, 
after you after the town realigned the uh the south and north intersections there i think that's when john heard did his last uh speed watch um speed check there and i think it, when i looked at his data it was about five percent of the traffic was going 50 or 30 kilometers an hour or slower so 95 percent of the traffic is going faster than what's typically seen as as uh compatible with walking and cycling on a local road um, so if it's going to function for people walking and cycling drivers have to go a lot slower and ideally we'd have less traffic um, and you'd find me as a big uh, supporter of of less traffic using this whole route through lower gibsons to get to elfinstone so that's all i'd have to say on that dave i'm happy to just do i don't need comments on that i'd rather just leave time for other uh folks to be able to have their two cents worth i'll uh, i'll quickly comment on some of them though so that other people do have the information um one yes i agree the uh infrastructure in place on glassford and on garrow point is is you know more or less indistinguishable um because there is no accommodation for cyclists and sidewalks uh the town has many roads that are like that and we have the official community plan that says this is what our goal is this is what we're working towards and we have road standards uh, and so we have a collector road standard that we are working towards when the opportunities present themselves. And then at some point or other, uh, we um, will either will collect what's called development cost charges. Uh, we will collect it enough to do some of those improvements ourselves, uh, or some developer will construct part of those. And in this case, actually, Gospel Rock is constructing a, uh, a chunk between Franklin and, and Secret Beach. And so those are what our uh, our goal is for, for those roads. Um, the I agree that the because uh, I live on one of these local roads and 50 kilometers an hour. If you're driving the speed limit, it it seems too fast. Um, and uh, and so we need to somehow look at, at how to slow down a lot of that traffic. Um, and then yes, the street trees are part of that um and uh, it has actually been shown that that you know trees and and that sort of thing will help uh, uh cut down uh speed on on uh, on roads um i think i'll leave it at that for the comments on on those thanks jody appreciate it okay we have um constantine now can comment So Constantine, you should be able to speak now, except that you're muted. I would like to uh, second Kevin with uh, his one-way road. I'm a biker and I come down from English Trail and uh, I try, I always avoid uh, Gower Point Road because it is dangerous and I go down and I go by Glassford. I live on Franklin. So uh, I think that what Kevin suggested that uh, uh, the section from tennis courts to uh, Franklin uh, uh, of Gower Point Road would be one way and section of uh, uh, Glassford would be another way. And I think that if you do it that way, there will be quite a bit of room for a walkway or bike lane on each one of those roads, because those roads, they don't have to be uh, two lane, just single lane and the rest of the road could be um, for bikers or walkers. Now, that is one point, and I, I, I was really impressed by Kevin's suggestion. Now, second thing is that I bike very often up from Franklin to by Secret Beach and to Upper Gibson through Pratt. Now, uh, that place definitely needs uh, walking or biking lane. Uh, I also agree that the S-curve 
is natural um, uh, traffic or speed calmer. You know, nobody can drive too fast there, but there is so many people walking that stretch, walking with the dogs or bicycling, that something should be done in there. And I am glad to hear that it's in the plan. I think that's about all I have. Uh, thank you, Constantine. Appreciate that. Uh, the two of the thoughts that have come to my mind uh, that would have to be weighed up, um, and somebody with by somebody with more background in this than I do. Uh, the one-way idea, one thing that that will do, uh, is increase the, the traffic, um, or the distance to destination for a lot of people, uh, and so. Uh, you know, if you're living at the one end of Glassford and you have to travel all the way around on Garrow Point Road and then up Glassford, uh, that of course, as I say, will increase uh, your your distance and carbon emissions and so on and so forth. Um, I'm not saying that that's a deal breaker. I'm just saying it's just something else that, that we need, would need to consider. Um, and then the other thing is, as I mentioned earlier, is that we would have to be very careful that whatever was done, um, whatever is done, uh, whether it's one way or whether it's closure, et cetera, that we're not forcing traffic onto a road where we don't want to increase that traffic. Um, so I'll leave it at that. And uh, Marcy, next person, please. Um, so now we're going to have Alan. And, and Al, if you could just mention the road that you live on, please. Yeah, hi, um, I'm Alan Rockins. I live on 313 Glassford Road, sort of right in the middle of that green stretch there, just mm -hmm. south of Dogwood. Um, I just wanted to say, um, I've lived in the road for about eight years and since almost since we moved in, um, I've felt like something needed to be done on the road. It, it's obviously quite scary when people go screaming down it. Um, so I just wanted to say thank you for all you're doing and making this effort. I know it's really hard and it's hard for the people on Gower Points um, and it's hard to find a compromise that it, it's all these people. So I just wanted to say how much I appreciate what you're doing and for making this change to the road that really needs it. Um, you know, I have a family, we have lots of family, friends down the street with kids that are all playing on the street all the time. And it's just, I'm really happy something's happening because it's scary. It's scary seeing the cars fly down. And um, so I just wanted to say, I appreciate what you're doing and that's it. Good. Thanks, Alan, I appreciate that, uh, that feedback. Um, and when we are contemplating changes that that might be, you know, could be significant, uh, not everyone is going to be happy with those changes. Um, and a lot of people are, can be resistant to change. That's just, I don't know, a human condition, I suppose. Um, but again, what what we're doing with looking with changes is to uh, we're using the official community plan as our roadmap. Um, and uh, that was the document that the community created through a huge long uh, public process. And unfortunately we can't do everything at once. And so we have to take these opportunities as they arise. And so in this case, it was a hundred percent grant funded, um, no taxation um, and that uh, means that we, we it, it doesn't always mean that we are able to do everything else in order to get everything ticking along uh, nicely. We just need to make sure that we are uh, not creating an unsafe uh, situation. And um, there may be temporary measures that we can put in place. I was just driving down uh, this section of, of uh, uh, Garrow Point that we've been talking about. And I see an opportunity there as a interim measure to actually be able to widen the shoulder uh, so that uh, people have a safe place to, to walk off the uh, traveled lane. Um, so uh, anyway, I'll leave that and, and uh, uh, Marcy, who's our next guest. Um, we have Catherine up next. And Catherine, if you could please just say which road you live on. Um, yeah, so I live on, um on Maplewood Lane, just um, one house in from the corner of Blasford and, um, and Maplewood, which is, it's 
sort of, it's almost like a three-way connector into uh, where they, it hits Gower Point. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we have lots of little kids around. And uh, right now, Glassford is a, an accident and tragedy waiting to happen. Um, so, I mean, we, we have to have, we have to have traffic calming there. I don't, I don't think closing off is the answer because that's just going to make, uh, you know, Gower Point right now is not, it doesn't look like a connector road. Glassford looks like the connector road because it's, it's wider and more open. So people just naturally choose that, you know, it's, <laughs> it's a much easier road to go along. I mean, Gower Point is, um, Right. It was dangerous to walk on. I, I walk on there all the time with my dog and, um, you know, something needs to be done there. We go, you know, it, it needs to be, be widened and made into a connector road because right now it's a lane. It looks like it's a lane, you know, and uh, what will happen if you, if you, you know, the one way is, is an interesting idea. I mean, I'd be one of these people who would, uh, because I go along, um, um, down to Pratt to get to work, I'd be one of the people who would just go up one of the side lanes, Blaine Lane, to get back onto Gower Point to go the other way, rather than going all the way down to Glassford, assuming that would be the way to go, and uh, then going up and then coming back all the way along. So for people who live, you know, in, on, uh, on Maplewood, that's probably what they would end up doing is going up the, the little connector lanes and that's a concern for those people who live there, I would think. You know, more traffic is going by on these um, connector lanes and there's kids playing there as well. So it's, um, you know, that's my concern. I mean, I think they both need to have some kind of traffic calming, but um, well, Glassford definitely does. I mean, it, even if it's putting up, um, uh, you know, an immediate solution is putting up children playing signs. Um, but on Gower Point, I mean, it's the, the road has to be improved. You know, if the roads improve, maybe more people will use it as well. Good. Thank you for those comments, Catherine. Um, uh, I just want to mention a couple things uh, that your comments bring up. Um, the I think probably one of the things that uh, anyone who drives along Gower Point, that one section of road anyway, would comment on is the condition of the asphalt. Um, not maybe not just the width, but you know, uh, it's certainly um, a little dilapidated. Um, and uh, right now, uh, council budgets roughly between three and four hundred thousand dollars on on uh, asphalt and, and uh, road rebuilding uh, on an annual basis. Um, and really we should be spending uh, around 550 to 600,000 in order to see our overall network improve. Um, and what we focus on and what staff recommends to council is to pave the roads that are going to cost more if we leave them where they deteriorate to a point where uh, a more expensive solution is uh, is the only option. And so paving it now will be far cheaper than if it was left later. Unfortunately, the byproduct of that is that the roads that are in bad shape and already are as pretty much as bad as they can get uh, within you know reason uh are low on the list um and and that's where the additional two or three hundred thousand dollars would go if we had that money um so one of the things that we do is we uh try and uh time road repaving in conjunction with uh um, other works such as uh, uh water main replacements and Garrow Point at this point does not require any water main replacements, um, but uh, Arbutus Reach, which is a very short dead end road, uh, did need an uh, did need a, a replacement, and so that road's got new pavement. And you'd look at that and go, well, you know, there's, you know, a dozen, fifteen, twenty houses on that road. It seems pretty low priority. Um, however, as I say, we're leveraging the money that we had. The other one is that. Um, 
uh, is to try and piggyback on development and require development to, or sometimes developers are required to pave uh, their section of road as part of their uh, development. And in this case, again, Gospel Rock uh, will be doing some of that work uh, on Garrett Point Road. Um, but that's the challenge when we don't have a big, um, oh, I don't know, big box stores or something that are a huge uh, uh, tax revenue source uh, is we're, you know, trying to do, uh, I wouldn't say too much, but in a way trying to do too much with too little. Uh, council couldn't tax the town to the level that we need it in order to see improvements uh, done, such as, as regular paving and so on. Um, otherwise, we would tax uh, people out of their homes, and that's nobody wants that. And this is going to be part of a larger discussion, which uh, we're hoping to start having possibly by the end of this year or, or next year, and that is uh, looking at the level of service versus the taxation, I suppose, that people are willing to pay um, because, uh, you know, the town doesn't have, you know, a huge um, bucket of money that we're not spending on infrastructure if um, residents and businesses want to see sidewalks or this or that or the other, uh, there has to be uh, a way that we can pay for that. Um, and so we try and be pretty imaginative with how we can stretch the dollars we've got. Um, but unfortunately, as I say, that means that sometimes we can't do everything that uh, uh, we would like to do, such as the improvements to Gower Point Road. And last comment on, on uh, um, the points that you brought up uh, is just a reminder that if uh, a road closure was something that council wanted to entertain, that uh, staff would be recommending it be done on a temporary basis um, for six, nine months, 12 months, something like that. Uh, in order to have people get used to it and to discover what uh, side effects might come or what positive things have come out of that uh, before uh, the trigger was pulled on on permanently closing uh, the road. Uh, Marcy, next person, please. Um, I just wanted to read one comment. Um, actually, just a couple of comments. So Anne mentioned that the bad shape of the roads helps slow people down on the roads. If you pave yes. it, people will speed. Yeah. You're absolutely right on that, and that is one of the uh, uh, one of the spin-offs um, on on paving the roads. Is that yes, you do in fact uh, see vehicle uh, speed increase. So agreed on that one. Um, and then the next is from Marion. Two comments. She said, "My concern is that traffic might flow down Franklin. Would it be possible to put calming bumps on the water side of Franklin, not just the bus side?" And then she also mentioned um, in conjunction with uh, the speed cushioning on Gower Point Road towards Secret Beach that a speed bump just before Franklin might well reduce the speed of, of approaching traffic on Gower Point. Uh, so the, um, the idea that you're talking about uh, as far as would it increase uh, traffic volume on Franklin, that would be one of the concerns that we would uh, um, be looking at. And I think if that was, did prove to be a problem, I think uh, probably speed cushions would be a, uh, a good idea uh, in order to keep that uh, uh, traffic volume low on Franklin Road. And as far as the traffic calming on Garrow Point, uh, as you come towards Franklin from Secret, uh, is, as I say, that's going to be the topic of a conversation um, and some draft plans that have been prepared by the developer uh, that will be discussed uh, at uh, uh, committee on uh, June 15th and uh, at a, another public information meeting on the June 21st. Okay, now we have um, Denise. And Denise um, actually, before oh, we, sorry, uh, sorry uh, before you introduce another person, which I'm, we'll, we will take the uh, comments. Uh, things seem to be going well here. I'm, we're at five past eight. Uh, however, the conversation seems to be uh, fairly productive. Uh, so I'm willing to go on for, um, well, let's, let's see what we're like in another uh, 10 minutes and um, 
see how we progress here. But I'm I'm very happy with the uh, the collaboration that uh, and cooperation that we're getting here. So yes, please go ahead. And we do still have several hands. Okay. Um, so Denise, um, you can speak, and if you can just say your road, please. Hi, I live on uh, Glassford Road. Um, so first thing I'd like to say is uh, great work on the cycling and walking trail interconnectivity. It's uh, looking really, really good. Comment on why um, you're not considering sending cyclists uh, down Franklin along Headlands and uh, Dougal Road. It's already traffic calmed and it goes by all the beach accesses and a couple of parks. Just, just a comment on that routing. Um, all right, so with, with the Glassford Road closure, um, a couple of questions about if the road is closed, I understand that there is the lot development um, being considered. So if the road is closed and the lot goes ahead, will, the, will that make the lot bigger than it now is? That's one question. Okay. And then if the road is closed and there is no lot proceeding there, what would be the plan for the land? Because uh, you keep bringing up the OCP and in uh, one of the main things in the OCP that I've read over the years is the uh, green space and uh, protecting green space. So it would be... Um, Presumably, maybe there would be a park there and we could keep the green space that is already there. Um, if it's not, if the road is not closed, ultimately, and the lot goes ahead, that would mean that Glassford Road would uh, be moved. Right. Okay, close to the end uh, property um, and then bisecting where the um, uh, bus stop is, I would assume. Uh, uh, ish, ish. Is it, the bus stop is a, uh, that's a long arrow point just past Glassford, if you're heading yes. into town? Yes, right. yes. Right. Uh, I, I'm assuming that's what it would be. And would that then be a two lane road? And if we are sending the cyclists down there, then that might be a bit crowded for them as well, because it, would, it wouldn't be an 85 foot um, road allowance as it is right now. It would be much narrower, I believe on the plans. It was a 60 foot road that was left. So I'm just wondering um, with all of these possibilities uh, and the lot, potential lot development, how it can all work. Sure. My, my last question is, um, when does the water main on Gower Point Road need replacement? So when might people expect that to hmm. be done? <laughs> uh, I don't. Um... Yeah, it's it's not at this point. It's not on our priority list at all. I just I just happen to have the uh, if um, in front of me here, and and so what? Um, actually, hang on. I'm just going to write that down. Um, okay, so you've asked a number of questions. And I was trying to jot them down. So one you said about bike routing. Uh, so. Um, when we create a, a bike route, um, it's not necessarily that we are trying to uh, direct them to the most scenic or or uh, either the most tourist stops, although certainly that would be the interest of, of some, um, but also we're looking to encourage uh, alternative tra uh, types of transportation. And so that includes commuter um, and so uh, um, Glassford Road is a far more uh, direct route uh, for commuter cyclists or people who are actually trying to get to a specific place, possibly Secret Beach from, um, you know, Dougal Park area. And so it's, 
And this is a network as well of improvements that we're doing. So uh, that is the primary corridor, but it doesn't mean that we don't have uh, accommodation for cyclists elsewhere. Um, we haven't really looked at the size of the lot um, to, to any great detail. However, uh, um, my thought is that we, I don't believe that the lot would be that much larger because as I, if at all, uh, because as I mentioned to you, uh, if Glassford Road was closed, then uh, we would still want to maintain um, access for emergency vehicles. So obviously you've got a big fire truck and, and uh, although it would be bollarded or, or some sort of treatment like that so that other cars weren't going down there, it would still have to, the, the road uh, or connection would still have to be wide enough for a fire truck. So we couldn't whittle it down to just, you know, three meters, for example, for uh, uh, a path for cyclists and, and, um, uh, and pedestrians. Um, uh, so at this point, you asked about the land if, if the road's not closed. Uh, well, at this point, the road closure and the resolution from council regarding uh, creating a parcel out of that are somewhat independent uh, because the creation of the lot can occur whether or not Glassford Road closes and Glassford Road can get closed whether or not the affordable lot was created. At this point, we have a resolution from council to create this lot. Um, and so that's what we would be uh, working towards. So as far as another plan, if that doesn't progress, uh, that would be up to a decision for council. Um, and then again, you asked about the realigned road and would it be two lanes? Yes, it, uh, if, if we're creating that affordable housing lot, um, without road closure, yes, it would be for two-way traffic, and uh, we would ensure that it would be wide enough for a uh, safe route for cyclists and pedestrians. Um, and then your question about the Gower, or when the Gower Point water main is, is due for replacement, uh, I'm taking that to be, you know, when is the road getting repaved? Um, and what I'm, at this point, what I'm anticipating might be the next piece of infrastructure going down there is uh, a dedicated sanitary line for Gospel Rock. Um, and in which case, you know, we would look to piggyback on that if we could. Marcy, next. All right, now we have um, Mark. So Mark, if you can just say which road you're on, please. And you're still muted, Mark. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, I use the road quite frequently, and I'm, I'm opposed to having the road closed. Um, obviously, I use both sides because I'm on the corner here. Now, Glassford Road is one of three ways into the town from Gower Point. One uh, is Gower Point Road requires upgrading prior to any closure of, of uh, Glassford. There are no sidewalks. There, cars are parked on either side, and it makes it quite narrow to go through there. So, if you're talking about yeah. that being the main artery, uh, substantial work has to be done to that road before it's uh, it, it would be the one and only road going in, uh, because also there's calming measures on Franklin, so it'd be the prime road. Uh, the last uh, traffic study, as you indicated, was conducted in 2013, and the response from the residents at that time was to keep Glassford Road open, and there's no indication that a recent study has been done of the town and the residents other than this forum right now. And I'm hoping that there will be uh, a, uh, a mail out or a vote of some sort to uh, uh, collect everybody uh, in the town of Gibsons rather than just in, the, uh, in this area. Uh, there's no indication that a fire rescue or first response services have been consulted, nor does it appear that it's a risk assessment has been conducted to identify the impact of the road closures of these services. Um, uh, you indicated a little while ago that uh, there may be a, a barrier or something for uh, fire trucks to get through. 
So obviously you've thought about it, but have these people been brought in to assist in the uh, risk assessment? And lastly, the closure of the road affects all of the residents of Gibsons and surrounding communities. Uh, the notice regarding this meeting only went out to a week ago, and it appears that only a select few of residents, as far as we can tell, uh, have the, had the opportunity for this public consultation. Thank you. That's all I have. Uh, thanks, Mark. Um, I was writing as fast as I could. Um, so one of the things that uh, you mentioned was upgrades to Garrow Point before any closure of Glassford is considered. Um, and I just want to reiterate that it's it's um, it's challenging to we we have to take opportunities as they arise, and this has arisen um, to uh, consider closing consider closing. Uh, Glassford Road, or some other traffic calming, or what have you. So, uh, regardless, the objective is to slow traffic speed and reduce traffic volume, and uh, in order to have it be a more comfortable place for cyclists and pedestrians. And uh, um, the way our our funding comes in. Uh, we can't always have everything in place before we take action. And, and one of a, a good example was um, there was some concern raised about putting in the multi-use path and the bike lane going up Gibson's way uh, between kind of five corners and, and uh, North Road and that there was no downhill bike lane and this is meant to be a, a, a main cycling corridor and uh, council opted to uh, proceed with the uphill bike lane at that time, recognizing that we had the funds to do it at that, at that point um, without actually having money to do the downhill bike lane. And we were fortunate enough to be able to get a grant, uh, which enabled us to build the downhill bike lane. And so uh, we wouldn't have received that grant had we, not have the uphill bike lane to start with. So um, it's just, you know, we, as I say, it's, uh, we have to take the opportunities as they arise. Um, the uh, 2013 survey, yes, uh, there was a mail out done. Um, and I seem to recall that Glassford Road residents were greatly in favor of um, uh, closing the road. However, what turn the tide was the people who lived in the surrounding roads were not as, as uh, um, in, were in favor. And one of the things when you're living on a road, um, while that is public infrastructure and a public road, uh, depending on what works you're doing along there, it is going to be the residents that in this case, we're talking about speeding vehicles on Glassford. So of course, somebody who lives on Maplewood or on one of the side streets wouldn't be concerned as, as concerned about speed as the residents who are actually living on Glassford Road itself. Um, impact to emergency services, we're reaching out to the public and, and uh, we are gathering information. Um, and yes, absolutely, we will be talking to uh, um, emergency services before we uh, took any um, any action on this. Um, and then as far as affecting all residents, there is this balance uh, between, I guess, largely keeping things status quo, I suppose, uh, where you can appreciate that people traveling from point A to point B would be choosing to, would prefer to drive on Glassford Road than Gower Point Road because Glassford Road is smoother and wider and a straighter course. And so that would be their vote. Um, however, uh, the fact that the OCP has this as a, as a main pedestrian and cycle corridor, uh, the, um, the desire of residents to be, or sorry, well, people, drivers, to be driving along Glassford Road and using it for whatever reason, whether it's a shortcut or whether it's smoother or whatever it happens to be, 
um, takes a, a lesser impact or a lesser consideration, I would say, than, um, uh, than people on the street. Um, the, another example of that is actually North Fletcher and uh, some significant works are being done along there as part of this downhill bike lane that I mentioned. Um, and, and some significant traffic calming is being done on North Fletcher. And uh, the people that we hear about not being happy with it are people who use that as a cut through. And uh, again, the hierarchy of the roads is such that uh, we are trying to get people onto the, um, uh, the collector roads. And we take this step right now without having a, well, we do have a plan for Garrel Point Road, but without having the funds for it, it's taking an opportunity as it arises. And, uh, um, you know, we take this one step at a time and they're not always in the order that we would like to see them. Marcy. How are you doing for time, Dave? We're at 20 after now. Uh, let's we still go have. Eight. How many, how many hands do we still have? We've got eight hands up still. Uh -huh. uh, let's see how fast we can do these. Uh, maybe I will be less verbose in my responses and uh, we'll just hear the concerns at this point. Okay, so we have Maureen next. So Maureen, if you can please just say which road you live on. Hi. Um... My concern, and, and it's my daughter lives on Glassford and Maplewood, right on the, the corner there. And I've been over here for eight years and have noticed an increase in the traffic and also the speed. And, and my concern is I have two grandchildren, four and seven, and have noticed over the years more and more kids are in this area. It's it's totally a, a beautiful little residential area but it is scary and the thought that one day one of my grandchildren or one of their buddies are going to be run over because of traffic and traffic speeding in a residential area is just a heartbreak i i'm not sure going one way on glassford is an answer because then i do feel it's going to put it on other side streets and other res streets that are residential but I, I really thank you for doing this. And I am really hoping that some kind of traffic calming can occur. Thanks, Maureen. And uh, just a reminder, uh, and, and actually a question from Mark is, yes, absolutely. The next uh, uh, step is to do a mail out uh, survey to um, uh, the area uh, in order to collect the information um, from people if you haven't had a chance to speak your mind or get a, uh, an answer. Okay, we have Emily Doyle up next. And Emily, if you could just say the road that you live on, please. Hello. Hmm. Emily shows being uh, Hello? unmuted, but not hearing her. I think we can hear you. Uh, can you hear me? Oh, there we go. Yes. This is, this is uh, it's not Emily, it's uh, someone else. It was her <laughs> hand up. Uh, am I still able to speak? Uh, interesting. It shows yeah. as Emily Doyle. Um, uh, sure. All right. So, um, just, uh, my name is Zach Cavison. I live at 308 Glassford Road. Um, you know, I've, I've heard a lot of other people's concerns about the road closure. Um, and I, and I recognize and uh, respect their, their stances. Uh, even so I am of the, uh, of the opinion that I'm in support of, of the road closure. There are, Demographically, things have changed on Glassford Road over the last couple of years. I've lived here for four now. There's 11 households with uh, children under the age of 12 on Glassford. And there are three households on Maplewood that have children under the age of 12 as well. We also have the daycare, which is the Natural Connections Daycare. And in terms of a feeder, um, Glassford and Truman, on the corner of Glassford and Truman, right in front of the former church that's now a daycare, is the pickup for all the children in Lower Gibsons in the Bay Area for Gibsons Elementary. And uh, it's, you know, I'm not saying this is a perfect situation, a perfect uh, ideal thing. And I know Dave, you were talking about budgets, you know, budgetary wise, I'd love to see extra street lights down here and sidewalks and other things like that. Um, and, and I'm open to other ideas, but it is a big concern for myself and for my neighbors that we have no sidewalks. We have two street lights on the street. 
we have all these uh, young families and, and it, it is, it is uh, a busy road. Um, so I appreciate the town thinking about this and I hope that even if this doesn't go through or you know, there, there's enough, there's votes against it or something like that, that you guys recognize that it is something that needs to be dealt with uh, in terms of uh, road calming because right now, it, you know, people, people aren't really paying attention to the speed limits. And uh, when, especially when you're coming from Dougal, there's actually a little bit of a kind of a, a slope so you can't even see ahead of you very far past Glassford and Dogwood um, and people just speed and they're not paying attention. And we talk to the kids, but they're kids, right? So it's it's something that we're all concerned about down here. Good. Thank you for your comments. Appreciate that. Okay, so our next is Des. So Des, if you can please just say the road that you live on. Okay, um, I live on Wildwood Crescent. Um, it's not in Lower Gibsons. I just would like to make a comment is um, budget to fix all of it around about 600,000, Dave, if you were to do traffic calming and do Gower and everywhere else? No, $600,000 every year. Okay, so I, I guess uh, my comment would be that we just had an announcement that 75 units are being done by Kiwanis for rental housing. We have 54 units going in with Venture Village, and yet we have three affordable housing units down there. If that lot was sold for six, 650,000 and put into your road budget down there for traffic calming and everything else, um, I mean, I understand your grant is only around about 600,000, um, then perhaps, and it's not your authority, it, that has to go to council, but um, maybe that would be a source of funds to calm Dugal Point Road, fix everything in the neighborhood. Um, in, we all need rental housing, but the three units there compared with the 125 that are going in anyway, the money maybe by selling that property could be spent on every, all the concerns that everybody's had. So that's just my comment. Thanks. Good, thank you. Okay, next we have Kathleen. Oh, okay. So am I unmuted now? You are, yes. Oh, great. Okay, I'm, um, I'm, you know, I'm just really happy with this meeting because I, it's so complex and it's just wonderful to become aware of it. I'm the person that was worried about exciting the rest of Gibsons. Uh, I love that term. <laughs> because I really... For me, the whole area needs to be calmed down. I think we're in a cultural shift in which people who used to think a road was something for cars and cars alone and just a way to get from A to B now see a road as part of a community for cyclists, for um, children actually play in them. And they do on my street. Oh, I'm on Headlands and Burns Road. And they do on mine. It's not just little children. Once you're um, older, you also don't jump out of the way as quickly. I don't have a car. I walk everywhere and it can be a nightmare. It's fine to say that Franklin is curved and, and Gower and slows people down. But if you have to walk it to get to the Mahan Trail, it's pretty scary. And the same thing for walking along Gower Point. So I, I don't see, you know, because of this cultural shift that hasn't quite happened yet, I'm not sure I see a solution to Glassford except for making this pilot project to cut it off in order to get people to think. Oh, you just muted yourself, Kathleen, but I think we got your gist. And I, I appreciate grabbed my, oh. okay, I got my space bar again. So I just, one last comment though, yeah. is I absolutely hate the idea of the town selling any property whatsoever. And if we want to put another project like is on Franklin, I would love it. But I don't want any property sold to pay for anything. That's just my idea. <laughs> Thanks, Kathleen. Appreciate it. Okay, next we have Thor. So Thor, if you can just say what road you live on, please. Yeah, I'm at uh, 370 Glassford Road, which is at the north end near, near the corner. Um, just a comment. Um, if Glassford is closed at the south end and or um, 
it becomes a one way depending on the direction. And this is a follow up to a late, what a lady said earlier who lives, I think, on Maplewood. Anyone down in that area, if they want to um, uh, uh, head, I guess, uh, south, um, they're going to want to go up maybe Blaine, and which means Blaine Lane, which means Blaine Lane is going to have to be upgraded or you're going to run into a, a, a real traffic hazard if people go up Blaine and either turn right or left onto uh, a Gower Point. So I think that should be considered. Good. Thank you, Thor. Appreciate the comment. Okay, up next we have maybe the real Emily Doyle. We'll see. <laughs> Hi there. Um, so I live on Cochrane Road and I'm really excited about the gla uh, Glassford traffic calming. I'm one of the parents of a young child who likes to ride her bike all around and I, um, we totally avoid that road right now and I get nervous and she plays uh, with friends who live on that street. Um, one of the questions I had was just around um, how um, the cycling or walking kind of get separated from the the road and um, I love how beautiful Franklin is for having a little path to the side but um, one of the concerns I have on that road is that the um, Franklin little path there's sections of it that aren't really that accommodating or um, useful if you use a wheelchair or have a stroller and I just wondered about um, making a um, just thoughtfulness around people with different abilities and and maybe connecting a little improvement on Franklin um, just at the top there where it gets really steep and just right. wanted to shout out for that part. Thanks Emily. Yeah we do endeavor to to um, I think it's kind of like a a little bit of awareness of of uh, of people other than ourselves I suppose and um, I know, do know that that one section is steep and um, uh, good comment and, and we will definitely be keeping that uh, uh, in consideration. Thank you, appreciate that. Okay, we're down to our last two. So now we have Angela. So Angela, if you can just say what road you live on, please. I live on Gibson's. I've lived in the area for um, over 20 years now. And I think, you know, Burns got shut off and I don't think there's been any big problem about that. And about, I can't remember exactly what year, so Dave, you probably know, they tried to do some traffic calming on Glassford by changing the shape of the road at each end. Right, you, we, did, we did that at the one end, yeah. Straight through the net, yes. But we can see that that still hasn't worked sufficiently. So I think that, you know, it is gonna have to take some fairly serious measures of either traffic calming or shutting the road off, I would be in favor of either. I'm really excited to hear of some designated bike and um, walkways along Glassford. I think it's a good use of the space. And as everybody has mentioned, there are lots of families and the numbers of families with children has really cre increased over the years. Good, thank you, Angela, I appreciate the comments. Okay, and then we just had, Mark had his hand up one more time as a follow-up, I'm thinking. So, Mark, I'm unmuting you now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I thought I put my hand down. I guess I put it back up again. Oh. Uh, I, okay. Well, now that I'm on, I'd just like to say thank you. This has been most informative and uh, looking forward to further of them. Good, thank you. And I'm really pleased with the turnout on yes. this. Uh, sorry, this Dave. Oh. I, I just noticed that Jody had his hand up one more time too. If like okay, uh, but okay. before everyone leaves, uh, I'm going to let Jody speak in a second. But um, I really appreciate the um, uh, the tone of the meeting. Uh, really appreciate everyone listening to each other, and and um, uh, this sort of venue seems to be, at least for engineering projects, certainly seems to be uh, really working quite well. Um, and uh, uh, I saw several comments that um, uh, people are appreciating it. So uh, who knows, uh, you might see uh, more of these even after we get to uh, um, hug each other in the street. Uh, Jody. Actually, sorry, if I could just say 
one thing too, um, just anybody who's mentioned a comment in the Q&A, um, I have been keeping track of that. So we are making note of any other questions that we didn't get to. Um, and then also anybody that wants more information, there is a web page on the Gibsons um, website. Um, so if you just go to gibsons.ca, you can find a page dedicated to what we've been talking about tonight. And it will be updated as more information comes in. Um, anyways, Jody. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, I re really appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to, for you to come and talk to the residents of this area. It sure would be great to um, have some visuals of the different options come back to the community before they go to council. Um, one of the things with the, the Glassford um, poll that was done in 2013, and it was, it was an either or, there was only one option. And when that was voted down, there was really nothing left there. It'd be great to see a bit more of an iterative process so that we could come to a, hopefully something that, that uh, satisfies a lot of people um, including the town's budgetary needs. Um, mm. And maybe there's some phasing that can happen with this, but it seems like at this point, there's some great energy around um, improving Glassford, not, not uh, posing nearby neighborhood streets. And, uh, and, and maybe we don't have to have everything done with this grant, but it would be great to get a plan that is the plan that we can go forward with over time as opposed to just a stop get measure stop gate measure that that just does us right now. Yeah. Um, so that's that's just my last comment. I'd love to see visuals on this. I'm sure a lot of people would like to uh, drill down into the de details of it. You've got a ton of knowledge from residents on this street who could provide input on it when they see uh, a few different options, I'm sure. So that's it. Thanks a lot, Dave. Thanks, Jody. And our next steps aren't exactly carved in stone, except that uh, we will be putting out uh, a survey um in order to gain feedback um and then i think based on that will likely dictate uh what our next step would be um beyond uh beyond that so thanks again everyone for uh showing up and uh have a good rest of the evening and thanks staff for being here as well appreciate it